and we're literally in the Baja 1000. <laughs> and it was so funny because we're trying to book it out of there, and I felt like this frantic, like, okay, let's get going, and then boom, we're right in the middle of this pack of race cars cruising through the, the deserts of Baja and we were in the lineup with these race cars. Y'all, Jesse climbed back in the RV, and for the next 100 miles, I had to listen, oh, be, I'm gonna take Tucker back here one day, we're gonna build our own off-road vehicle, we're gonna come do the, maybe I'll we take are. my dad to do the, yeah, that'd be cool. We got over to Bahia Conception, one of our favorite spots on Baja. I think all of them are our favorite spots at this point. So many great things about yeah. each of these places we've been to. But Bahia, That's my top two. Yeah, it's a pretty special spot. And this time it was a lot different first weather-wise. Tell me about the weather. Oh, okay, so we are arriving there at the end of April. And we are one of the only RVs on the beach. And we very quickly realized it's because the wind is completely gone. When last time we were there, there was a gentle breeze, good enough breeze to cool everything off all day, all night, nonstop. The breeze is gone. Now it it's stagnant. is stifling hot. <laughs> Stifling. At first, we're like, hey, look, the beaches are <laughs> empty. We got it all to ourselves. <laughs> all the snowbirds went north, and we get to enjoy. Oh, wait a minute. No, no, we were the schmucks that just stayed in Mexico longer than we were supposed to. <laughs> and then I was the jerk who, that night, as I'm trying to like give Tucker a cold bath because he's so hot, I'm like, that's it. I'm turning on the generator. I'm running that sucker so that we can have AC. And Mr. Nice Guy over here, goes, well then you have to go outside and you have to like apologize and explain the situation to those poor campers out there because they're just gonna listen to your generator run all night long. There are some tent campers and yeah, I felt a little bad because they're just trying to camp in a tent, which A, is a pretty bad idea to be this place <laughs> camping in a tent, but B, it would definitely add insult to injury to have to sit there and listen to this generator running all night with the air conditioning. Yes, and so I was like, <laughs> fine. So I crank out the generator, I get it cooled down for Tucker, I put him to bed, and then I march over to these campers, and it ended up, I don't know if it was a father-son or just two friends, but they were two super nice guys, and I said, hey, we have a baby. He was like on the verge of overheating, so I'm really sorry, but we're gonna run our generator tonight. And they're like, you know, you coming out here and letting us know made all the difference. Because initially we were like, those beepers, those damn RVers over there running their generator. And so I was like, I'm so sorry. I'll bring you a beer. I will pay you guys back. I'll be right. And they're like, no, 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 it's fine. Thanks for like apologizing and letting us know. <laughs> and so everybody's happy. In fact, I think there was a couple other motorhomes behind us on the yes, beach. Yes, I even, I even went to the motorhome behind us and I gave my same spiel and they were like, you're fine. We're going to run our Jenny too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we weren't the only ones doing it. So uh, just know that if you're in this area come April, May, or beyond, you may not have that nice weather that we found when we were back here in February. That's first and foremost, but what would what make it find. worth all the, all the sweat and all that discomfort is worth it because there's one thing that's much different this time, and that is the marine life has changed. Yes, it, the water and the temperature have now made it a perfect feeding ground for the whale sharks. So we thought we had done our one and only whale shark experience in La Paz. <laughs> Lo and behold, now the whale sharks are in Bahia Conception this time of the year. Yes. And with, we had a chance to, to get out there. And what was really cool this time around though, this isn't a tour company. We want to still be responsible, you know, eco-tourists, but, but you're not going to pay a boat and have a bunch of other tourists, you know, bopping around, essentially competing over who gets to swim with the shark. It's, there's nobody out there. So if you want to go swim with the shark, some, go swim with the shark. I mean, yeah, it was so like, one of, one it of was the cool. Nice things about being in Bahia Conception, not only, you know, can you, can you pay to have someone bring in your water, there are also plenty of boats with local guys that you can say, hey, I'd like to go 
see a whale shark up close and personal and they'll say, hop in my boat, let's go. And so Jesse was able to do that. In some of the refuges, you can only snorkel and, and there's very strict rules. I had all my dive gear. I said, well, hey, how cool would it be to be able to be underwater and just like you know, observe these massive creatures going by. The boat dumped me out my dive gear on, I swam kind of to this area and, and waited and sure enough, like, here comes this whale shark and before we had to hold our breath, you know, but this time I'm just like watching this, this nature, right? It was, and it was, it was incredible. Just take my time and enjoy these animals and that was really cool. scuba diving with some little fish. Yeah? Some big fish. Uh-huh. Biggest fish in the sea. <laughs> with a tibiron ballena. Ballena. Also known as a whale shark. Wow. Pretty awesome. I stayed back with Tucker. Tucker was napping. I think I had a sunburn. I don't know. It was just one of those times where I said, Jesse, go. So he went off on his own. But and then it worked of course, out well because that evening. But when he gets back, of course, I was all mopey because dang it, he got to swim with whale sharks again. Um, and so he remembered where the gentleman took him on the boat and he was like, all right, get your bathing suit on, get Tucker, hop in the truck. And he drove us down to the beach, Playa Coyote. Yes, so side note, Playa Coyote, or Coyote uh, Beach, that, is a primo whale shark area. Mm -hmm. It's hard to get a big RV there, but if you have a small RV or if you just have a tow vehicle, you can drive your tow vehicle over there, which is what we did. And and it's an incredible spot because yeah, the beach all, is- all of the plankton or whatever it is they eat, they just it just kind of settles in this bay, which makes the water maybe a little bit icky if you want to swim in it, but in it fact, will I, bring the whale sharks. I was flying the drone and check out this footage here. You can see on this footage, this massive film of the algae or plankton, whatever it is, that the whale sharks are eating is see is it just like how it's pulling into this little bay area. I want to hear your your thoughts. I was watching Jenny on the paddleboard, but tell me yeah, that how was, was it oh out my there gosh. on your paddleboard? The only thing I would have changed given the chances I would have liked to go earlier in the day so that the sun was up higher, I think I would have been able to see down in the water a little bit better. We were there closer to sunset, and so um, I couldn't really see the shark till I was like on top of it, <laughs> which is a horrifying thing. I know there are whales, but when you see a dorsal fin that size, it just really messes like, with your sense of comfort. <laughs> makes you like, okay, is this friend or foe? Is this big, massive animal below me? I definitely remember at one point I'm paddling <laughs> and I'm convincing myself that it's fine, it's just a whale shark, and then I see this 
massive dorsal fin go under my paddle board and I couldn't even bring myself to stop. I just kept on paddling away from it because like, it was a shark. It was a shark, forget it, it's not a whale. That was definitely a shark. But then I got over it and they're whale. Think of them as big fish, not as a shark, but it was such a neat experience. Probably not, actually definitely not as cool as swimming with them, being in the water with them, but being able to just be out there on my own. I, I saw like four different whale sharks in like one hour. I mean, how cool is that? I couldn't have paid someone yeah. to take me on a tour to do that. And that's just me paddling around. It was, ugh. I don't like tours. If I can do something without a tour, sign me up. And that was, that, so cool. <laughs> yeah. So if you're on your Baja trip and you're heading up late April or May like us, put that under note, stop off mm -hmm. with Mija Conception. It's gonna be hot, but you might explore some whale sharks in the Bring process. Some fans with you. And uh, <laughs> yeah, very, very cool experience for both of us. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, uh, but you know, be respectful, be responsible. Right, you are in nature. This is Mother Nature we're talking about. I so. so wanted to go. I've seen videos and pictures of people like grabbing that dorsal fin and holding, hanging on for the ride to the shark. Yeah. And it looked really cool. I wanted to, I, I really wanted to do it, <laughs> but I, I didn't do it. Um, it just, after learning from the tours down in La Paz, like, hey, that there's a, there's a protective film that you could wipe off the shark with your hands. I didn't want to, you know, hurt the shark. I, we actually saw some sharks down in La Paz that had s sustained some damage yeah. from boats. Like, you know, these, these critters have a hard enough time just becoming an adult. Yeah, it was cool just to it. watch it. Yeah, it's it was pretty cool. It. So the morning before we left Bahi Conception, we woke up and some of the race car drivers uh, had parked in the same area. They were camped out and uh, one of the race cars had broken. It didn't make it through the whole Baja. And they were super, super cool dudes and they let baby Tucker hop there in the driver's seat. So I got some photos of Tucker hanging out there in this, this Baja <laughs> race car, which was pretty cool. Yeah. I love it because you can see just how excited Jesse is. Like, we're gonna do this one day. We're totally doing yeah, that one that day. Kind of baby, that's no yeah. idea, but. As you'll see throughout the series, many of the best spots we visit are off grid. Some places you can have water brought in, but there are no electrical outlets along those beaches. What there is, is abundant amounts of sunshine. So solar is hands down the best way to be comfortable in Baja. <laughs> There's definitely some spots that we park at and one day turns into another, it turns in, you just don't want to leave. And we didn't have to. We've been using Battleborn lithium batteries for over two years and they are the absolute best way for us to store our solar power. These batteries offer us twice the capacity of our old batteries and they're also a fraction of the weight. Plus they're maintenance free, allowing us to get out there and stay out there or get out here and stay out here. We've got Tucker napping in his bed, his little baby monitor is plugged in. All solar. <laughs> we are definitely not babying our batteries. We're covered in dust. This is the desert. There's dust everywhere. But since they're maintenance free, they're still supplying the power that we need. We, it was hot, right? Let's get the heck out of here. Yeah. And uh, we headed on north. All right, we are cruising down through the Cuesta del Infierno. Loosely translates into the highway to hell. <laughs> 